This is Forensic Serology Flip Lesson number two. There's been a homicide. You're the criminalist or the crime scene technician, and detectives have called you to the scene. There are red puddles of what appears to be blood. They're asking you to identify that substance. So the first thing you're going to do is answer the question, is it in fact blood? Once that answer uh, comes back positive, then the next question is, from which species did that blood originate? And then finally, how closely can that blood be associated with a particular individual? A couple of tests that are performed. The first one is directly at the scene, and that's called a Kasselmeier color test. And that's a presumptive test. And that's going to answer the question, is it in fact the sample, the puddle? Is it in fact blood? And the way the Kasselmeier test works is a Q-tip or a swab is rinsed with distilled water, dipped in the blood sample, um, drops of phenolphthalein are added to it, and then followed by drops of hydrogen peroxide. If the sample is in fact blood, it will turn pink almost immediately. The precipitin test is used to identify the species source of the blood. And so in that case, an antisera is used, normally derived from rabbits, and it it has been injected with blood of a known animal, the rabbit has, to determine the species origin. What if the scene has been cleaned up? Well, you arrive at the scene, you're called to this particular scene, and it's the scene of a homicide, but there is no real blood evidence. The question then is, is there blood at the scene? Is there more blood? Um, can you find blood other than the particular area that's been identified? And scientists or criminalists have a great tool called luminol. And luminol is a chemical reagent that will react with hemoglobin in blood and causing it to luminesce or causing it to glow. It takes about five seconds to get that glow. And the stronger the glow, the more intense the glow, the more blood that was in that particular area or at that scene. You can see pictures below. You can see some spots of blood that were in that house. And on the right, you can see some drops as well. The only issue with luminol is it doesn't last very long. So you would need to immediately uh, take a picture of it, record all of your information, because the... Um, Luminol starts to break down and the glow will go away. What if there is no blood present? Well, there are what's called secretors in the population, and that makes up about 80% of the population. And secretors actually will secrete their blood type, the antigens into other body fluids like saliva. So you can tell what someone's blood test type is by taking a saliva sample. The other thing obviously that you can do with saliva is run a DNA test and in that case you get you can get an actual match. So we talked about blood being a class evidence characteristic. And in being that it doesn't indicate to any investigator that you want to exclude the blood from your case. You always want to use as much evidence as possible to associate a criminal with a crime. So we can narrow um, the probability of a particular blood type down and associate it with that individual. And what we do is we use the blood type to predict the probability of a particular blood population, a uh, blood type in a population. So if we ask the question, what percentage of the population would have blood type A positive? 
We know that from the information I've given you that 42% of the population is type A, 85% of the population is RH positive, and what we do is simply convert our percent to a decimal. So 42% equals 0 0.42. 85% 0.85. 0 then we multiply our decimals. So 0.42 times 0.85 equals 0 0.357. We go ahead and turn that back into a percentage by multiplying by 100 and we find that it's 35.7%. So every, there's 35.7% of the population with A positive. That's a big number. And so would you want to include that in your case? Sure you would. Absolutely. Anything that would help. Just by identifying the blood type that was at the scene and the blood type that belongs to the individual, that's going to help your case. There are other proteins and enzymes on the surface of red blood cells that can be used in identifying or individualizing um, blood evidence, narrowing the suspects down using more proteins and associating them with the individual. So the probability of uniqueness continues to increase with more proteins. So just to give you an example, there are three other proteins that we'll call MM. 30% of the population has that combination. There's MN, where 48% of the population has that combination. And then there's NN, where 22% of the population has that combination. So let's say you're asked to calculate the percentage of the population that has O negative and the MN protein sequence. Well, O we know is 43%, so we convert that to 0.43. The RH negative is 15%, or 0 0.15. And then MN is 48% of the population, and that was just given to you above. So we take those three decimals, multiply them, by each other, and what we end up with is 0 0.031. We convert that back to a percentage, and what we determine is that 3.1% or 3 in 100 will have that blood type, that combination of O negative MN. The significance of this is you can use it to more closely associate an individual with their particular blood type. So by multiplying more factors and identifying the fact that this particular combination is even more rare than A positive, that helps you um, to use that information to apply it to your case when you're trying to, um, it's just class evidence still, but I know um, a person on the jury is going to be more convinced by 3.1% certainly than by 43%. That's the end of this flip lesson. You need to work on the practice exercises that I assigned for homework. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact me by email. Thank you.